All right, I foresee this being a much longer video than the last couple ones that I made. So if I've been good, I'm gonna put timestamps in the description. That way you can jump through the different topics or at least go take a look at what I'm gonna be covering. But just so you know, uh, the first uh, part of the video, I'm gonna go through, uh, at least walk you through some of the things that I changed in terms of uh, gear. Um, I got my main gaming PC now. Uh, capture cards, uh, well, I literally just redid my entire setup here over the weekend, did all the cable management and everything else. I probably won't show you in super close detail everything. I might do that in a, in a future uh, episode, especially once I start working on my, my background a little bit, which is one of the things that's on my list that I want to improve. But, uh, you know, I don't want to get too too ahead of myself right now. This already, this, this last week and a half has been a dramatic change in terms of how I've been running my streams and I'm super excited because uh, things are slowly but surely sort of you know falling into place and working and it's awesome uh, and I can't wait to show you. <laughs> uh, another thing that I'm going to walk you through is my current OBS setup which is it basically has its dates uh, a day's number. Uh, I'm about to get rid of all the scenes to start from scratch. Uh, this is a uh, configuration that I've been using for, for many years now. It's sort of a legacy thing, but uh, I'll, I'll explain in a minute why that's that's going bye-bye and what I'm what I'm basically planning uh, on doing from, from now on. Also, I want to talk about my overlay system, um, why I'm using Stream Elements uh, over Streamlabs, for example, or Muxie or any of the other million uh, Twitch alert systems that are out there. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, I have a list here in case we didn't notice. <laughs> I'm actually trying to read off of that, even though I tend to go off topic quickly, but at least this somewhat helps me stay uh, focused. And uh, yeah, I also want to walk you through so, sort of the design process of the overlays themselves, uh, not just the alerts, but also my, my stream in general, how it's actually made and uh, how, you know, which, which tools I use to, to make that. Now, I'm, I'm starting this video assuming that you know the basics of OBS. I'm not going to go through anything basic. Uh, OBS is a pretty straightforward uh, app. Uh, you don't really, it's, it's not, if you've used a video editor once in your life, it's actually pretty simple. If you, even if you use Photoshop once in your life, like it behaves basically the same way, it's just layers. Uh, but if you don't, uh, and if you just landed on this uh, video series and you're getting try, trying to get started and if you've never done any of this, I'm gonna include a link in the description to uh, this OBS uh, masterclass by Epos Vox. Um, you should go check that out. Uh, it has like 140 something short videos covering every single nook and cranny of OBS. So. I highly encourage you to go check that out and then you can come back and watch the rest of the video. <laughs> Good. Um, I'm also, oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, mo all, all my overlays are done in HTML and CSS. I probably won't go in super detail about that. You know, how I, how I actually program every one bit. It's, it's This is more of a general uh, approach. If you want me to go deeper, let me know down in the comments and I'll I'll do that. But uh, yeah, let's begin with the, with the setup. So I got my gaming PC, and uh, so right now I have a gaming PC and a streaming PC as of right now. Uh, what you see on the screen right now, what, what's being captured is my streaming PC because obviously that's the one running OBS. The uh, streaming PC, just as a reminder, at the moment is a Core i7-6700K with 32 gigs of RAM and a 980 Ti GPU. And it has uh, an NVMe, like an old, like one of the early NVMe drives. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty quick drive, uh, and also has like a scratch disk uh, that I use. It's a half a terabyte SSD. That's where my VODs are being recorded to. And right now with this configuration, I'm recording my VODs at 1440p at 60 frames per second. But I'll talk about that in great detail in just a moment when I walk you through OBS. Um, my gaming PC is a Core i7-9700K with 64 gigs of RAM, yes, <laughs> and uh, the 1080 Ti that used to be on my main gaming PC, I've moved it to that one. And that also has a one terabyte NVMe S uh, drive for the boot drive, and then it has two one terabyte SSDs that I use for recording my regular YouTube videos. So 
that's basically my daily driver. Every time I sit on this desk, I use mostly my gaming PC and I turn on the streaming PC only when I'm streaming or when I need to like move files or whatever. But for the most part, like this video right now that's being recorded on my streaming PC is actually gonna be copied over to the gaming PC for edit and rendering and all that. I don't have like, you know, I, I rarely use my PC when I'm rendering stuff. I usually like set the renders on when I go to work or when I go to sleep or when I go to eat. So I don't necessarily need a second computer to render videos, at least not for now, but I have the option if I really wanted to. But that's what we have right now. The uh, streaming PC has the two capture cards that I mentioned in, well, I mentioned one in the previous episode. I got the cam link for the camera, which right now they're, the Sony's plugged in there. And uh, the camera, I'm actually waiting for one of those dummy batteries, the ones that you plug it in. It's like a fake battery that you plug in. It has a cable that comes from underneath and it basically tells the camera that it's a full charge battery as long that as long as that is plugged into the wall, of course. Um, right now I'm, I'm still using the actual battery, which uh, with a capture card and uh, you know, the fact that I was using like a USB app before and that was kind of glitchy, that solved, having the capture card already solved a few of the issues, but the last stream I did two days ago with this setup, the camera was uh, overheating. <laughs> so uh, from what I understand is because it was trying to charge the battery as well as use it and that causes heat and it was turning on and off uh, every couple of minutes. So hopefully with this new dummy battery, I should plug it in and it should be fine. I'll report more on that later because that apparently that's an issue with Sony cameras in general. Uh, what else? Yeah, so the other capture card is the Aver Media Live Gamer 4K. It's like their top of the line sort of PCI Express capture card. It allows me to capture my main PC at 4K 60 FPS, which is kind of overkill right now because I stream at 1080, but eventually I will love. I, I have enough bandwidth to stream at 4K. It's just Twitch is not really designed for 4K yet. But I do still record my VODs at 1440p. Eventually, I'm going to bump that up to uh, 4K. Right now, I'm only using it uh, or at least recording at 1440p because the way I have my scene set up is not very efficient and it drops some frames, but I'll, I'll get that fixed. Now, the... Um, the other thing that's plugged into the main capture card, to the uh, 4K capture card, is a switcher. So in that switcher, two cables come in. Uh, it's a 4K, like one of those like splitters. Uh, there's a 4K HDMI cable coming from the gaming PC, of course, and then there's a second one from the PS4. So that allows me to now, if I really want to, stream console games, which I may start doing. Uh, if I switch to that, Here's a, here's a little hint, there we go, of what will happen hopefully soon. At least that's that's the plan uh, here. Let me switch back to here. Uh, so another last, last thing I wanna talk about in terms of the physical changes is, uh, well, what you see behind me, I end up moving that lamp. I don't know, I'm, I never know which angle is best. Like I ended up moving that lamp as a backdrop, so there's something a bit more interesting to see there. One of the things that I want to do is, or at least experiment, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, I want to have a projector sitting on this table, projecting custom backgrounds in the back, so, so that there's some movements and maybe offset the ugliness of my uh, blinds back there. And uh, eventually, yeah, th this this picture right here, I don't know if I'm going to keep that, I'm not a huge fan of how, they, how it looks. Um, I'm waiting on a couple pieces of custom artwork that I made. Functional, actually, uh, as well. Not just art, but it has a use. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in a minute what I got. And once I actually get it here and put it on the walls, I'll probably do like a full updated tour of the room because it has changed a lot. And um, the light, this one was like my main light for lighting up the scene around me. I'm probably going to keep that one there as a background or I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe just return it to Amazon. I have like another week and a half to return it if I really want to. Uh, but I need to get proper lights, like a proper light configuration, because right now it's like not great. As, as you can see, this is it's OK, but not great. Another thing that I changed is my mic here. It used to come from this angle 
and I felt like it was always covering my mouth and just half of my body. Um, so I figured, okay, it's better. It's better if we move it out to this side. And now since this microphone is in a, such a prominent location in terms of the frame, this is like a very minor detail-y thing, but I wanted to add a pop of color. So I removed the uh, Velcro strips that come with the microphone, the, the road ones, and I put some color ones. So at least there's like a, like a touch of color, just, I don't know. I, I look at that and it just makes me a little bit happier. <laughs> so uh, just a minor thing. Eventually what I think I'm gonna do is put a condenser mic on top of the microphone, I'm sorry, on top of the monitor. That way there's no, there's no microphones on, on, on the frame. I, I don't know how I feel about this ch chunky thing here. I feel like I want a more clean uh, sort of area, uh, more of a, I don't know, just, it looks doesn't look great. It doesn't look professional. I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's sort of the main reason why I'm not uh, wearing this on camera. I feel like I look ridiculous wearing this. Uh, I love how these sound, and I use them all the time, but not on camera. So usually, what I do is have my earbuds here that are completely tangled. Here, let me untangle them real quickly on camera in front of everyone. So basically I just wear one like this and obviously this wouldn't be visible. It would just connect to a cable there, but at least I can hear when I'm talking to Jack over discord, I can hear it on my, on my earpiece and I could just play and it's like way less intrusive and it's on the opposite angle of what the camera is capturing. I don't know. This is like a minor thing. I don't know if this is doing much of an improvement in terms of uh, the experience, but it, I just like it better uh, in terms of how it's actually coming on, on camera. So, We'll, we'll see how that evolves. Last but not least is a change in the monitors. So for half of last week, I was thinking to myself, like I might need a third monitor because when, when I'm using my computer, I use two monitors actively. I have my main display and then I have a secondary display where I keep my, let's say my recording software active or I'm watching a YouTube video or a tutorial or whatever else. I, I use two monitors actively constantly. So if I did that, then I wouldn't have another, then I wouldn't have another monitor for when I'm streaming. Because ideally I would like to have a main gaming stream, uh, gaming uh, monitor, then a secondary one, and then a third one where OBS is running and I can see what it's being rendered and I can maybe see the chat and all that good stuff. Now, adding a third monitor, like if I needed to physically fit those displays on my desk would mean that I needed a third monitor. And I almost bought one, to be honest, but thank God I didn't because I found a much better solution than the, down the, you know, just thinking about it a, a little bit longer, I, I came up with this solution, which since I can't move the camera so much, I'm going to show it to you on my phone. So as you can see, once this actually is in focus, there you go. I put one of my monitors in portrait mode. Let me actually use this hand instead. That way I can move my microphone. There we go. So that uh, monitor that's in portrait, the basically I'm feeding it two HDMI cables. Actually, one of them is display port, the other one is HDMI. And the software in my monitor, which is an LG 27 inch monitor, uh, allows me to do picture in picture. So I split the monitor in half. The top half has OBS running. And that's why all the windows here, all the modules in OBS look a little bit weird. It's because the aspect ratio on that top corner is uh, four thirds instead of this like 16 by nine. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually really useful having it up on that corner. That way you can see the chat uh, that you see here and the notifications uh, from the, sorry, the notifications here and the chat here in, uh, in uh, basically in this configuration on that top, top screen right there. And then below this is gonna, this is basically my secondary monitor from my main gaming monitor that's right here. Just to give you an idea of, of how things uh, or how things are, are sort of laid out. And that has uh, proven to be really useful, <laughs> honestly, uh, having it like this. And it's also just created a much more enjoyable space uh, in here. I don't really like having a third monitor. 
Uh, I, I feel like just having one like on the top will be ridiculous. I, I'd rather not do that. Um, but this this was like a perfect solution. I'm also using an app, uh, if you're wondering, uh, called the Share Mouse. I actually bought it, it's like 50 bucks. And uh, that allows me to basically seamless transition my mouse and keyboard across all the screens. I was thinking of getting Synergy, but apparently Synergy doesn't have a way to like arrange an offset. Here, I can actually show you what this looks like. Right now it's like disconfigured, but basically there should be one more display down here, usually if my gaming PC was turned on. Right now it's just suspended or something. Uh, and then I can move my mouse across all three monitors, copy and paste, like literally click a file and drag it to the other computer and it will like copy it through the network. It's it's amazing, uh, highly recommended, way more than Synergy, honestly. And I tried a, a couple more. I tried the Logitech Flow, it's just, absolute garbage don't even bother i have like everything my mouse everything is like logitech and they support flow but it was just a nightmare uh it didn't work at all and it wouldn't allow me to offset the monitors this way and uh, i also try like another one called uh it was like a microsoft one it's free oh like mouse and keyboard without borders something like that it had like a weird name doesn't matter i tried it it wasn't great this one so far so good i love it um, so I think that's it in terms of setup. I think we might be ready to move on to the OBS section of this video. I feel like my voice is just, it's gone by now. Okay, so OBS, as I was saying a second ago, we have this set of uh, scenes, actually it's much more, makes more sense if I use this. Um, we have, Scenes that are have that have like a number basically right next to them, and then we have all these global scenes. What this means is, uh, and this is just like a dummy visual separator. Like if I go there, it's just simply black. Uh, what what this means is that these global ones, basically everything that doesn't have a number, should never be seen by viewers. It should always be one of these. These are like scenes that have been that are sort of raw in a way that i repackage them and then I include them in these actual scenes i mean that may might make more sense uh, in just a little bit but uh this has uh has served me well for for many years uh, it's pretty straightforward the first one is a blank one now the reason why i have this one is because up until recently i didn't have a stream deck <laughs> which means that uh, i mean i I still haven't configured this, but eventually I would like to just press a button on Stream Deck and then have the thing switch to this scene, for example, with a countdown, and then start streaming. Uh, the only thing I have on Stream Deck right now mapped is uh, recording functionality, uh, but eventually I just want to be able to press this, maybe even send a tweet like, hey, I'm live, join me, something like that. Just try to batch multiple tasks in one click. Uh, but because of that, because I don't have that, I have this uh, test card, which uh, it's like a, this pattern is like old TV stations used to have this. I just added it because it looks cool as hell. <laughs> and uh, just that nostalgia factor here. But uh, the main reason why I have this here is because I click on this one, then I click on countdown and it resets the clock so that it goes down five minutes and then the stream starts. Now. This right here, let me start on the countdown, uh, which is basically how the rest of the scenes are laid out pretty much as well. But just to give you an idea, we have the countdown video starting from the bottom. These are like layers if you never use OBS, but the bottom layer has the background loop. As you can see, you can just turn it on and off. Uh, this is a pre-render video that I made. Uh, I actually still need to tweak it a little bit because some of these clips are, are actually kind of laggy, like they were captured uh, in a not very efficient way, which means that when those scenes are actually shown on the screen, it looks like the stream is laggy, but it's not because the rest of the animations are actually really smooth. But you know, that's just like a minor detail that's just making me really mad that I need to go fix. But yeah, basically this is just a background video. I really need to name these, once I redo all these scenes, which I'm planning on doing and showing you on a future episode, of this series, uh, I definitely need to come up with proper names because it's important. Uh, don't not have proper names. Like spend the time adding names. It will go a long ways. 
All right, so we have the countdown video, and then this one is a browser source that is rendering my logo, these like gradients on the top, the, the blue gradient, the dark gradients at the bottom, the halftone patterns, and then the social media things, the little clock that's, as you can see, it's synced to my system clock, and uh, the different URLs for the things that I wanna feature. And then on the top, which is invisible right now, is my stream elements top alerts. Uh, I have that there because sometimes when I start streaming, people like remember or are reminded to, for example, resubscribe using their Prime account or whatever. So I just trigger that. Uh, this one is from five days ago, but you can see how it just pops up on the top of the screen and it doesn't distract uh, or cover anything else on the screen, which is very subtle. Now, the countdown, uh, I actually am seriously considering getting rid of it. Um, the reasoning why I want to get rid of this is because, well, here's the thing. The, the benefit of having a countdown is the fact that it tells the viewers immediately when I'm actually planning on starting the stream. So for example, if you join the stream right now and you see that you have two minutes and 30 seconds before it starts, that might give you enough time to go to the bathroom or to go grab a cup of coffee or something like that. And it just, I think, I feel like it's, it improves engagement. So that's one of the reasons why I have it. The problem is that it's more often than not, like around the two, three minute mark, I'm already ready to begin. And there's no point in having people wait too much. Or sometimes I will actually want like a longer uh, warm up period so that more people can start joining the server. So when I go live, there's actually someone watching. Uh, not that it really matters because I've done, I've hosted live streams for like two people or three people uh, before and it's fine. And you just talk as if there were a hundred there. Uh, you basically, you never not stop hosting your stream even if there's like zero people. If I can give you a tip on how to stream, do that. Because then the one random person that joins in and, and you don't even notice because uh, you were maybe not looking at your uh, viewer discount and just saw that you're just like quiet, looking at the screen, playing the game, not really saying anything, that person is gonna leave. So just always host uh, your stream, no matter how many people are watching. Obviously, if there's less people in the chat, it can be a bit more intimate. You can try to boost engagement by having people participate uh, in different ways. We, we can talk about that more in future episodes. And, and that's something I'm still developing, so I'm no expert by any means, just so you know but something that I've been thinking about recently. So what I think I'm gonna do is get rid of the countdown and just straight up have like, oh, we're starting soon, like don't go anywhere. You know, all those phrases I keep cycling there, but like instead of having a countdown for the big text, we just simply have like starting soon, don't go anywhere, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, that way I can just start the stream whenever I feel like and uh, if I'm having technical issues, which oftentimes happens, I'm not forced to begin the stream at the five minute mark. I can actually let it run for a, a bit longer. So especially that, that's particularly helpful if I'm playing with someone else that, you know, with Jack, uh, for example, let's say his computer is down or he's putting up the game uh, or he just like quickly came from work and he's not really ready, but I already launched my stream so that I can get some people warming up. I think that will be more useful. So. Unfortunately, yeah, the engagement is not great if I don't have a countdown, but it's good in other senses. So now this is great because what's about to happen is uh, some animations that have been pre-programmed. This is one big HTML file that's rendering this whole thing. The logo, the countdown, all the social media things, and then that phrase that says, here we go, and then the logo. It's all done in uh, HTML and CSS. I can actually show you. So this is the file. By the way, this is the Atom text editor. It's free from GitHub. You can get it. If you don't have one, just highly recommended. It. It's a little bit slow compared to other ones, but it's great. And it has a million plugins that you can get if you really want to get deeper. Uh, I have all of my graphics that I use on my streams as a repo that I have it synced with GitHub. If you want me to go deeper than that rabbit hole, please let me know in the comments below because uh, I'm actually considering backing up all my OBS scenes into a repo in GitHub. That way, if I'm with my laptop at some friend's house, 
with one click, I can just sync all of my graphics and have it ready on every on any computer anywhere around the world. And I think, uh, and also get it GitHub allows me to keep a uh, version of the different things that I've been adding over time. So that's why I have it here set up this way. Um, but yeah, it's a repository with uh, all of my images and my stream alerts and everything else. So this one, as you can see, we have all the phrases that keep cycling as uh, as the countdown sort of ticks down. This is done with JavaScript. There's a whole bunch of JavaScript here that's making this behave the way it does. And then after a while, things sort of fade out and the logo is revealed. Again, if you're really interested, I can show you all of this in great detail. It's a very not non-efficient way of doing this. I really need to optimize this, but it works. This is all the code, for example, that renders the clock automatically so that I don't have to. This, well, you don't, you can't see it now, but if I go back to the scene and then come back, you can see it says 9.57 p.m. with the local time and everything else. So that's how it works. And obviously here's all the CSS styling that I've been doing to make this work the way it does. Some of the animations are done with JavaScript. Some others, as you can see, are done. For example, this pulsating one is done with, actually not this one. Well, I mean, this one is the pulsating one for the uh, social media things that are actually on a different scene, not the one I'm showing right now. But for example, this one should be, where is? Is it here? No, it should be somewhere down here. Oh yeah, no, it is this one, the pulsating one. I think it's, so this one, you'll see that it fades out. And when it fades back in, it doesn't fade back in, it just flickers in, which is a really cool effect. <laughs> it's very subtle, but it catches your attention a little bit. And this one just like fades in and out. So we, I have like two different types of animation. I do that with CSS and then everything else is done with JavaScript. Okay, um, so the next thing on the list is basically it's four of the same scene in terms, in terms of what they actually have. So let's switch to Minecraft, for example. So right now it's capturing the, the capture card, which is uh, right here as a source is capturing my PS4. I can, uh, if I, I have a remote control for the, uh, actually, I can show you. This is my switch came with this. It's probably way too dark for you to be able to see. It's just a remote control. Actually, wait, can I put it? There you go, you can actually see it there. It's a really tiny remote. So it has the three buttons for the three inputs that it has. So I can just like click there, uh, right, I won't do it right now, but I can click there and just switch between my PS4, my main gaming PC, and if I really want to, I don't know, an Xbox or a second computer of some kind, whatever I wanna do, I can do it that way. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, in this scene, uh, this Minecraft thing is no longer needed because this was like a game capture when my streaming PC was also my gaming PC. So this one, I'm just gonna hide it there because it's really not necessary. And then I have a global scene that, I mean, it's literally written there. It has the overlays and my face cam. So if I hide this, obviously right now only my face cam is gone, but in, remember there's like transparent things happening there too. So if I relaunch this animation, you can see that top thing. It's all like one big layer that is defined right here. So you can see it over there. So inside of this scene, I have my stream element stop alerts. I have this overlay that's the intermission. It says full screen and it's turn off. This is turned off because when I'm in this scene, for example, uh, let's say I want to go to the bathroom or something like that, or I need to figure out some technical issue and I, need, I don't want, you know, mute, I want to mute my mic from my mixer and then I can do this, turn off my face cam and then press this and it just pops up a screen, uh, or sorry, a browser window, which is basically the same code as the countdown, except I just changed the clock for the word intermission. And it's semi-transparent, so you can actually see what the hell I was playing before. Uh, in this case, you can just see the PS4 uh, logo there in the back. And then when I'm ready, I just click that and then I go back. I just press the two buttons on my Stream Deck. In fact, I might be able to show you that. Stream Deck. So yeah, so these two, for example. Look at the at, at these two being animated. I was actually pointing with my finger on the screen. Uh, so Facecam is on. 
and now it's off. It's like a toggle switch. And the intermission is on and off. I wish that you could add transitions to these. I don't think you can. If you if you know a way to do it, let me know. But honestly, it's not such a big deal. I could do some like weird JavaScript stuff. So whenever the browser window becomes active, I can just trigger the animations at that point so that it will fade fade out or fade in. I, get, I it won't fade out, but it will fade in. Um, so that you know, there's there's ways of doing it, but that's what I have so far. It's been really useful, especially when there's technical issues and lately I've been having a lot. Every, every time I keep adding more things to my stream, more th other things get broken. So this, super useful. Uh, also, this is uh, what I have here. So Minecraft is, I can go back to countdown, as you can see, or switch to the Minecraft source. Eventually, all these were gonna get replaced with just the one scene which will have these two layers and pretty much nothing else. Uh, actually, one thing I might do is, because the games are so different in terms of the UI that they have, and this is actually uh, something that I wanted to talk about. So there, there is a logic to why I kept the notifications on the top and this sort of face cam and social media combo like very minimal. In games like uh, City Skylines, where the UI is like very, very complex and has like tons of menus, having this, uh, having like really crazy animations and text that pop up and like the, the little don donation cup, like the, there's that's already too much on the screen. I see some streams from people that have like a million different things happening on the screen. I feel like that's more distracting than helpful. I do want to encourage people to uh, to send cheers and to subscribe and all that, but I also want to have the cleanest production that I can uh, whilst you know including all of that. And that means sacrificing things like the donation cup, which visually doesn't look great anyways. I love, uh, don't get me wrong, I love that effect where like someone drops like tons of not like bits and it just explodes, That that's really cool. I might think of a way to like integrate that in a different way instead of just having a cup. Maybe the whole thing would be a cup and you just see like the piles of bits on the floor. I don't know, just something to think about. But um, definitely don't wanna go over the top with the overlays. Uh, I don't want anything that's not absolutely necessary. And uh, that's why my uh, overlays uh, here, specifically all these notifications that, that you see on the top, are kept to a minimum. So that whenever there you, there's a UI there, it doesn't actually clutter that. And if you're someone someone else watching this as a VOD on YouTube, like those notifications are kind of not longer relevant. And I don't want that to distract so much from the game that I'm playing. So that's another reason why I have that way. Um, you might also be wondering how I design these things. And by the way, finally, things in closing, same thing. It's this countdown and the intermission uh, cards, except with the word thanks. So nothing too crazy there. So you might be wondering how I deal with, like how, how I came up with this design that I have right now, even though it needs a little bit of work, especially this one. As you can see, like the vignette effect is kind of like over the thing. I have this color source that I that I can see what I'm doing, like align it properly. All of this needs to be refactored from scratch. So don't use this as a <laughs> as a reference. But uh, yeah, basically I have my vignette here. Yeah, I can just turn it on, which includes, it's literally a transparent PNG that's overlay on the camera. It just adds a little bit of a vignette effect. And it also has my logo that's masked at the bottom. Uh, the cam link itself is actually using a masked uh, filter here, which I can turn on and off. This is the actual full frame. And this is uh, what it looks cropped. I eventually, I'm gonna have a, a proper lot. Right now it's turned off, because as you can see here, it says quick and dirty. It's probably too small for the video that I'm recording right now, but it was terrible, so I deleted it. So even if it's on, it doesn't even work, because uh, I deleted it. But I'll talk about how to color correct this in a future video because it's actually pretty simple. Uh, and then this, as I, as I was uh, saying ago, a moment ago, is this uh, crop that makes it look uh, much nicer once you're in this view. Let's turn that off. Go there. There we go. So one, one of the things that I need to improve is I need to be able to group all of this 
into its own module. That way I can reposition it based on the game I'm playing. Because City Skylines, if I keep it like this, let me show you. If I put it like down here, it blocks all of the menus. So you don't want that. Uh, which uh, brings me to what you see on the screen right now, which is Adobe XD. So Adobe XD is like a minimized, like, sorry, not minimized, like a minified version of Adobe Illustrator. And it's great. It's missing a ton of features because it's a relatively new app. They, they basically made it from scratch. It's meant mostly for UI design, which is what I do for a living. But I realize I can do so much more with this. Uh, and it's so fast to do vector things that it's ridiculous. So I've been using it to design the overlays that you saw. At least I get some basic of the design sketched out, and then I do the rest in HTML and CSS. So I have uh, this placeholder here, so I like reposition things. Eventually this is where, or how I would like to group things in OBS, that way I can just freely move them and uh, basically position it in the most efficient way. For example, here in Minecraft, I don't mind having it there. Like these coordinates like are not usually present in the version of Minecraft that I'm playing, so I can just keep it there out of the way and then everything else is visible. Again, there's so really so much going on with the game UI that I don't wanna add more distraction with my overlays, but I also wanna be able to show them in, a, in an efficient way. And this is just like all the different drafts and copies of layers that I've been sort of tweaking. Uh, like I said before, this is a UI tool, a UI design tool, so I use it also to design my website. This is uh, a draft of my website that I was working on. So as you can see here, this is all that I actually design in, in Adobe XD, and then the rest I just straight up improvise in HTML. Sometimes it takes a bit more time to design things in HTML, sometimes it actually takes less time uh, to design things in HTML. I don't necessarily need to do the full website uh, to, to design, to, to actually come up with the final design of, of the thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to, way too off topic. But like one, one more quick thing that I wanted to mention is the fact that eventually I wanna have my website, uh, sorry, my website to connect to the Twitch API. So if I'm live, then the header turns from this into this and actually shows a player and maybe some buttons down there to take you to the actual stream. So that's something that I'm currently thinking of without going too off topic. Uh, what else I do with Adobe XD? Okay, so here's a diagram that I've been putting together of how my current workflow looks like. I wanna go probably in greater detail about this in a future video, but this gives you an idea of what my streaming PC is connected to, what my gaming PC is connected to. You can pause the video and watch this or wait for the next video for my explanation because I already sort of made a few changes from this thing. Uh, but this was particularly useful when I was buying the gear because I needed, I basically, it was easy to make a list of everything that I needed to buy that I didn't have yet and which, you know, how many cables I needed and where did everything plugged into because there's so many variables here that it's kind of hard to lose track of things. Uh, another thing that I did is playing around with the aspect ratios of monitors and basically set everything up before I actually moving, you know, before I actually move physical things, it's way easier to do it this way. And this is uh, no exception with the things around my room. So this is a, a scale representation of my room. Everything is actually up to scale. The desk right here, this Ikea Crawlby kitchen countertop, my mixer, my speakers, my monitors, just every, all that. I spend quite a bit of time rearranging things virtually as you can see like i flipped it like what if it looks like what what if it looks better on the other side and stuff like that um what's funny is that once i had everything sort of laid out here i would go into the real world with a measuring tape and then out i can just uh, do something like this so for example this one is 40 50 by 40. this is actually 50 centimeters by 40 centimeters in real life that's the scale so I know that I needed to leave a 40 centimeter gap behind the desk so that I could walk around, arrange cables, maybe put some lights in the future, stuff like that. I highly recommend you if you're gonna redo a, a room to do or use a software like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be Adobe XD, which by the way, I forgot to mention, it's free. You don't need the Creative Cloud uh, account. I should have mentioned that first because maybe people tune out by now, but. 
yeah, you can get this for free, probably because it's missing a lot of basic features, but for the most part, it's very useful. Um, so uh, I knew that I needed to leave a gap, in this case, a 75 centimeter gap on each side. So you can see it's kind of centered. I mean, I, I definitely eyeball things. Uh, I also put down some furniture that I wanted to get. So for example, this is the uh, L-shaped couch from Ikea that I got the measures uh, from their website. Put it here, also added this dotted line to see what the footprint is once it, this turns into a bed. I mean, right now my room is also the guest room. So if my parents are in town or uh, let's say we do another stream with Flux and uh, Bicycle Housen, this is actually gonna be part of the set. And if they decide to stay here for the night, where they will sleep probably not together uh but yeah i don't <laughs> i'm definitely i'm definitely going way too off topic there but you get the point um this is great if you're trying to plan out where you want your things to be and where to look like and then once i was ready when happy with the design everything else sort of like fit into place fantastically well um what else did I do in this document? I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, no, I forgot to mention. So this is a little piece of artwork that I just uh, worked on. I have, a, I literally placed the order for this uh, a couple hours ago. So I made, I designed three clocks from Redbubble. This is like my old merch store, but they have some cool clocks. So I have to like create them here. I have one for Eastern time, another one for UTC and another one for Pacific. So my goal is to put these on the wall as decoration, but also to be able to look at them when I'm streaming or before I stream, because I usually tweet when a stream is going to happen. Uh, and this might help me do some time zone math. If you want to get these, uh, you can uh, go down here and get uh, one of these three designs. If you want another design that's not included, let's say you want like Eastern Europe or, well, I guess Eastern, you can just pick this one. Uh, but let's say you want mountain time or Alaska time or Hawaii time or uh, Eastern Australia time, um, you name it. Uh, I'll, I can make a couple for you and then you can just buy it. But, uh, or you can just literally make it your own. <laughs> and that way I don't have to do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was like the basic design. Then I added the dots in Photoshop and that was it. Okay, so next up, what I wanna talk about is stream elements. So as I was saying uh, at the very beginning of the episode, or the, or the video, I keep saying episode because I'm, <laughs> I'm used to playing uh, uh, CDs or recording CDs, but stream elements has a couple things that I didn't find, a couple of features, I guess, that I didn't find with other providers. I tried Streamlabs quite a bit. Uh, I also played around with Moxie, never actually configured the stream to go live with Moxie, but I didn't have to, because what I learned as I was trying to set things up uh, was more than enough to me not want to use that. <laughs> but um, when I found stream elements uh basically they they have this plugin for obs that that's great uh, i get the notifications at the top i can actually filter them in any way i want and then i have the twitch chat below so that's pretty handy and also as op opposed to stream uh, stream labs uh they actually make it pretty easy for you to write your own custom stuff so they have a pretty comprehensive API that you can tap into. I haven't done that, but uh, what I have been doing is, if I actually show you my overlay editor, I have one big thing. Let me put fit to screen, there we go. Uh, I have one big uh, thing that has an alert box. They have all these widgets if you wanna add them. You can like sort of combine them all in one. I don't use any of this and I probably never will. But uh, you can either write everything from scratch using this custom widget, but it's not what I did. Eventually I will use this. But what I've been using so far is the, let me see if I can find it, feature widgets, I thought it's not that one, alert box. Okay, so this is the one I have. So alert box comes with, if I can somehow close this, yeah, go to editor. You have all the possible uh, alerts, alert types that you have. I don't have tips on my channel, so that's why that's turned off. But I do have follow alerts, I have subscriber alerts, uh, I have tier alerts, host alerts, rate alerts, etc. And uh, I can just uh, simulate things. So for example, if someone is rating me with 50 people, I can just do that. 
and it shows up at the top. So I can go in into, for example, rate alert. I can customize, for example, the volume. I can change the sound. They have a library of sounds that uh, I don't know how to access right now, but they have some okay sounds. Eventually I'm gonna make my own custom sounds, but it works for now. You can set the duration, the minimum amount of people that you want. So like if someone is rating you with one person, it's kind of odd. Also odd for the person rating you. I don't know, it just feels a little bit odd. So at least I added 10. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, hit the mic. I don't know how I feel about that, but it is what it is. But the cool thing is that if you go open CSS editor, I just changing, uh, I'm, 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 it's also HTML and CSS. Uh, I can just tweak everything. I have all of my styles in here. I haven't messed with JavaScript so much because I really didn't have to. The functionality that the alert has is already pretty good. Uh, I did have to tweak the tiers because uh, tiers, for some reason there's this, I don't know if it's a bug or that's how it actually works. Uh, if I do a thousand, uh, like Twitch, when it uh, when someone does tiers, apparently you can use the word tier 100. That's like the command. For example, let's say you want to do a hundred bits. Uh, that's the command. Uh, you can actually see it here. So let me increase the size of this. So it says tier 100, tier 100, tier 100, tier 100, and tier 100 for a total of 500. But if I render this, uh, I need to actually go here. Let's do that twice. Uh, that gets obscured and only the message night strict is shown. Uh, for a while, I, I was just printing all those tiers in the message, which uh, wasn't great. So that's this is when I actually had to go in and tweak the uh, the JavaScript on things. So if I go into here, open CSS editor. By the way, this is like annoying having to like cost like create or go into each one of these menus and edit the CSS and JavaScript for each one of them. That's why I want to switch to the other custom one that way I can just write everything in one and add the right variables and it will work but in this case uh, what I had to do is uh, import jQuery into my HTML if, if, if you don't know about web development you can skip this part but it's mostly technical and then in JavaScript all of this is given to you by stream elements but I added this last line which looks for the string tier plus a number and it basically replaces it with space or nothing in this case uh, for, for that matter. So that way I was able to delete it. But if someone else uses another uh, tier that is not the word tier, then it's gonna show up. So for example, let's see, yes, I noticed someone using, for example, this one, seems good 100. It actually prints seems good 100. Now, if you know how to like, deal with this in a much more efficient way, let me know. I'm uh, I'm all ears. But uh, so far, you know, trying to do this with Streamlabs was way more annoying than having to do with, with Stream Elements. And on top of that, Stream Elements has uh, the, this OBS integration. Uh, I know Streamlabs has its own version of OBS, which I tried. And it's, if you want to do stuff like this, it's like really annoying. So I just completely like, like I went back to regular OBS. I, the, the, the more or the less you're stuck into one of these sites ecosystems, the better. Uh, I, if I wanna, I wanna be able to be free to switch providers at any given time. So that's why I don't do donations or merge with them. Like I, I rather have separate uh, companies handle everything that why I'm not locked in. Cause if I wanna change anything, uh, well, it's much more difficult if, if you do it that way. So that's why I, I picked Stream Elements. I'm not married to Stream Elements. I may ditch them at any given time. So, you know, that's just something uh, to keep in mind. But so far it works. I'm happy with it. It's fast and they're, I've been on their Discord. They have like a developers uh, channel. So I've been asking questions there and I've been getting okay answers. Not amazing, but okay. Uh, enough to point me in the right direction and do the rest of my guesswork myself. All right, let me let me wrap this video up because it's definitely going way too long and uh, my voice is 
basically done by now. And I also want to go get dinner because <laughs> it's 10.22 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, anyways, uh, future plans. Um, so one of the scenes that I need to add is, well, first of all, if I do the, if I get rid of the stream countdown and replace it with like, oh, stream coming soon sort of thing, I'm gonna have a second scene where it's probably gonna look more like this, like this one right now. Uh, not that. Without that. It's gonna be like a full screen camera. Uh, it might have like a picture in picture of the game about, I'm about to play like on a corner somewhere here. I don't know. I need to design it. It will probably be like letterbox and there's going to have my social media things sort of cycling through. So it's just going to be a whole new scene that is not on this setup right now. Uh, another thing that I want to do is add stingers. Stingers are like those animations that happen between scenes. So if I change a scene right now, uh, what you'll see is that it just fades in and out. And also because the browser is slow, it takes like a second. So you see that flash of like unstyled content. Uh, that's an old bug with browsers, but uh, I hate that. And there's no way to fix that unless you add a stinger, which allows you to sort of preload the scene that's coming up and then do the transition. Um, let's go back to this one. There we go. So you see me in full screen. Uh, what else do I want to do? Yeah, definitely want to improve my overlays. So I want to create special overlays for, for example, when people send me 10,000 bit donations. That didn't work. Let's try that again. See, it looks like every other notification. I'm getting double the audio. Uh, probably because this is not muted. It is now, great. Um, so what I wanna do is have like a much more, maybe more intrusive notification. I mean, it's 10,000 bits. So I wanna make it a bit special. And uh, I might even like do a couple specialty ones for lesser amounts or like very specific in amount, uh, very specific amounts. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm still playing with that idea. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do. Um, like I said, I want to be able to group the face cam so that I can move it based on the game that I'm playing. That already covered that. Anyways, uh, I think uh, that does it for now. Uh, as always, if you're enjoying the series, let me know down in the comments. Uh, let me know what you want to see next and how deep you want me to go into the more technical side of things, specifically about the notification overlays and HTML and all that. Uh, that's like a whole thing. But if you want me to dig deeper, I will be happy to. And uh, I guess my next video will probably be about, you know, that di diagram that I show you before and like showing you my mixer and how I have everything sort of routed might make uh, a bit more sense because there's, I had some challenges setting that up and I was able to uh, circumvent those challenges in a very elegant way, I think. So I'd be happy to share that with you. And uh, I guess after that, we'll probably just do another update once I do all my scenes and you just uh, just want to show you like how everything looks after I redo everything. That's, that's what I'm planning on doing. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions that I haven't really quite talked about, please do let me know uh, down below. All right, that's it. See you in the next one.